What is your most embarrassing moment that happened while you were with me? Um, probably the first time I... And now, coming to you from the K2 Studios in San Diego, California, it's the world-famous Chris and Christine Show. Hey, what's happened, everybody? How are you doing today? Thank you so much for listening, and I am Chris. And I'm Christine, and welcome to episode 88 of the Chris and Christine Show. do 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 Fantastic! It is number 88. I'm loving it. That was like an aggressive fantastic. It was like fantastic. Well, <laughs> you know, baby, I got to mix it up now and then. You know? I don't know. It sounded a little a little too much. Little Maybe too, a little too extra. A little too extra. I, yeah. you know, I'm always bringing the extra sauce. You know, it's so funny. I saw this sweatshirt and it was like on a Etsy, sh- like an Etsy site or whatever. It was um like one of those that you can customize customize and it says it's okay guac i'm extra too Ooh. <laughs> you know because you always have to pay extra for guacamole well, that is true i didn't think about that <laughs> it's like it's okay guac i'm an extra too <laughs> you know what? i think at chipotle it was like i remember one day i was at chipotle and i wanted uh honey add- there's a tea chipotle chipotle that's what i said chipotle chipotle <laughs> chipotle 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 oh, oh too loud oh Sorry. you're blasting everybody's ears okay so anyways chipotle they asked me if you want an extra guacamole on my burrito it's like yeah sure no problem it's an extra charge and I'm thinking, well, how much extra charge is it? It was like a dollar fifty or something like that, or maybe it was two bucks. I was like, wait a second, <laughs> that's like almost a quarter of the price of burrito. Exactly, that's how much extra that much, you bring but... to this show. Oh, well, thank you. You're, wel- <laughs> you're welcome. You're all welcome. <laughs> well, so what's been happening with your week, Chris? Oh, Chris has been on vacation. Chris is in the house, loving it. It's, you know, my favorite time of year is any time I'm, I'm on vacation. <laughs> It's like, it, and your least favorite time of, of year is when everybody else is on vacation except for you. Yeah, I complain about that. Like, what's up with that? But my vacation is more like a staycation because not really going. Like, they ask me, hey, uh, you're going on vacation. Like, where are you going? You going on a trip somewhere? Uh, no, not really. I'm staying home and I'm loving it because I don't have anywhere to be at work. And that's uh, glorious for me. Yeah, I mean, it's not that you don't like your job, but you work hard for the money, and it's nice to be home and to work hard for the honey. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you mowed the lawn today, took out the trash, did the dishes. Got my truck washed. I am loving Chris on vacation. <laughs> vacation, Chris. You know, I'm trying to get these projects done around the house. I say, well, I'm going to clean this, or I'm going to clean, clean that. And then just today, you told me that our housekeeper is coming by on Thursday. Yes. So I'm thinking like, well, do I really have to clean? Oh, you know? yes. We always keep up. And she she does all of the extra stuff for us that just we can't keep up with. So it's big house. It's hard to keep up with. It is true. So, baby, how has your week been for you this week for as work goes and school? Go- I know school's over with, but what have you been up to? Well, I officially finished my last requirement for my chief business official certification that we talked about last week. And so I was able to submit for that. And um, they have to review my portfolio of expertise to see if I qualify or if I have to provide additional documentation. And I paid the fee $400 what? to get my license. Yeah. Well, you think about it, that's way cheaper than a doctorate, I would think. Well, and it's way cheaper than having to go through all of the academies, which, as we mentioned, is like $6,000. $6,000? Yeah. But um, excited, I'm excited to be under review for that. And so I'll find out in the next six to eight weeks on um, if I've been able to be cleared. But I heard back today because I've been working along with their team reviewing my stuff as I went along. And uh, I just supplied all the documentation I'd been showing them along the way. And they said, you know, every- if you supplied everything, you're in pretty good shape. I don't think that we'll be asking you for anything else. And so that's super exciting. Um, other than that, it's graduation week. And um, yeah, commencement is happening. It's like here. Can you believe it? Well, this is a fantastic journey to be on, babe. I've been with you every single step along the way. Of your doctorate, and I feel I like this, I feel like this doctorate belongs partially to me. <laughs> okay, I mean, Lord at least Christopher, a, a little bit. Thank you, Doctor Christine and Lord Christopher. <laughs> Maybe we should rename the podcast. It's like the Lord Christopher and and Doctor Christine show. No, Doctor goes first. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> I thought the Lord was always first. No, it's you know it's so funny because when people go to address letters to the White House to the president, technically. The doctor term is supposed to come before president. So what do you do? Like doctor and president Biden, doc or president and doctor Biden? I, I don't know. It's like Dr. Jill Biden and President Joe Biden. What's the order? I need answers on this, people, because you know, 
somebody was asking, they wanted to mail us a little package. And the formal way to address us now is you're going to die. What? Dr. and Mr. Smith. Um. Yep. Okay. Suck it up, Buttercup. You gotta, you gotta accept it, Doctor and Mister. Uh, well, you know, baby, I will be your Mister to whatever <laughs> your you. title is. If you're Judge or, or Doctor, whatever you're gonna be <laughs> in life, I will, I will be there for you to support. What you. is that movie that you showed me that had um the the guy that was like the first first Mister? Um, what was his name? It Are was like the Seth. What is it, Seth? Ro- yes, yeah, Seth, Seth Rogen. You showed it to me. I didn't. It was one movie. It was uh, Seth Rogen and was uh, it Cameron Diaz? No, not Cameron Diaz. It was a blonde. That girl that was from South Africa. What's her name? Uh, Charlize Theron. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. it Ther- Theron or Theron? How do you pronounce her last name? Theron. Charlize Theron. Theron. Okay. Uh huh. All right. So Charlize Theron. 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 Charlize. It's uh, uh, Charlize. <laughs> whatever her name is. <laughs> you know that chick. Yeah. And, Ooh, and the most oddball couple of all time. But he, she ended up getting to be the president, and then he was like the first mister or something like that right right but i guess that's like um kamala harris's husband where it was like madam vice president and yes her husband goes by what is it first gentleman or uh second gentleman that's what he goes by right because she's not president she's uh, vice right, president so he's second gentleman but right. i love that you know what we're you know shattering gender stereotypes here and I know you'll actually be very excited the first time that you see somebody address something to us that's like doctor and mr smith uh, you know, that's fine. That's fantastic. You know, as long as there's a gift card there, I'd be super happy about that. You <laughs> or know? some people might just say like the Smith family. Some people still feel really awkward putting the woman's uh, insignia or um, proper title first. It's very interesting. But um, anyways, graduation is here and we're super excited. And um, I, I just can't believe that it's like all coming together. It's, you know, we're just I don't know. I just I don't even have words. It's just so exciting. It's 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 amazing. It's a great feeling to have because you're going to be graduating. You're going to have this title. You're going to have this doctor. You're going to have. You're basically going to walk around and you're going to like be like, "Hey, what's up now? Look at me no. now. Like, like, check me out. Like, what? No, you know, like, I'm super humble when it comes. Are you to truly? Really, like I'm that. saying like, if I had the doctor, you know? but I do love when I'm on Zoom. I do. I did change it so that when I log into Zoom, it says Doctor Christine Shipman Smith. Where, where, like where, where, where does it say that at? Right underneath my face. So whenever I log in. It does like it's instead of saying like Christine Shipman. Oh, before they actually see you. No, like, no, no. Uh, when I'm on there, when I'm talking, it'll have my name. Below it does me. that now. I don't know. I see. I don't even use Zoom that much. I I just know. I thought it was for video. I didn't know they put pictures. I put words on there too. Yeah, you have your title, like whatever you want to be called. And so I put Doctor Christine Shipman Smith. And so when I'm on Zoom and being addressed, like when I'm presenting or whatever, it'll say Doctor. I love it. Ugh. It's fun. I mean, it's I've so, is it so on, hard for it's it. It's on there right now, right? Yeah. So anytime you do a Zoom call, it does say Dr. Christine. Yes. That is fantastic. Yeah. Well, good job, babe. This Thank is, you. This has been an amazing journey and you deserve it more than anybody that, I, that you know, I mean, I, that I've run across in my, <laughs> in my travels that deserves it more than you. Yes. Christopher's travels. Like yes. Around, all, the all around the world. All around the world. Just like this podcast. And there you go. Speaking of this podcast, um, if you like what you're hearing and we know we're going to plug this at the end, where can people find us if they want to find more of our episodes? Chris. Well, we have a website just for this podcast. So check that out. It is www.chrisandchristineshow.com. And that's Chris and Christine with K's. And right after this little break, we're going to come back with a fun little tidbit. I'm not going to reveal it to Chris because it's a surprise, Ooh-wee. but you don't want to miss it. So stick with us and we'll be right back. Hey there, K2 crew. We love having you as our loyal listeners. To keep up to date with what's happening behind the scenes, check us out on social media. Yeah, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter. And don't forget to follow our Facebook page. Yeah, tag us in your favorite fun stories. And guess what? You might just end up on the show. Today's episode is brought to you by Bruch. Now, Bruch is an electric toothbrush that will change the way you think about brushing your teeth. With powerful sonic technology and ultra-gentle bristles, the Bruch redefines what it means to have super clean teeth. It's like that feeling when you first leave the dentist. A fresh, whole mouth clean every single day. Our listeners get 15% off total purchase with code POD15. Follow the link in the show notes and enter the code pod 15 to get your exclusive discount and upgrade your oral care routine 
Well, welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us. And we have a fun little segment that we are bringing to you right now. And Chris has no clue what we're doing. What? Do you? I didn't get the note on this. I, this was <laughs> all sprung on me last minute. So I have no idea what we're going to do right now. So what happens with us with the Chris and Christine show is when we don't have a podcast guest, we mix it up with different types of content. In the last two shows, Chris has been in charge. And so I told him, This week, I wanted to be in charge, and that meant that he had to fully trust me for what we were going to talk and about. I, and a minute ago, I just showed you my wedding band. And I said, <laughs> I, obviously, I trust you. I got the yeah. stick on my finger here. So. Absolutely. Well, honey, one of the things that you might not realize is that coming up over the course of this next week is going to be our six-month anniversary for being married. <laughs> What? Six I know. Months? Oh, well, so right after, like uh, four days after this episode airs, it's going to be our six month anniversary. And so in the spirit of that, we are still technically newlyweds. Of course we are. So we're going to play a little bit of the newlywed game. No way. Here, a little bit, but it's going to be kind of like story version. So okay. on your paper. This paper right yes, here? Yes, hold on. Can I look on, at it yet? Uh, hold on. Okay. When you open it up. We have, I think you have eight and I think I have 10 uh, questions that we're going to ask each other and you're going to answer it. There's nothing, nothing that's super tricky, but one of the things that I know is that our listeners love to hear stories. And so I wanted to give them a little window into our world since we are newlyweds and some of the fun tidbits of our relationship. Ooh, this is going to be exciting. <laughs> it's going to be so, so fun. I'm, oh, this is so much fun. Okay. So you may open your paper okay, now. Okay. I'm looking into it right now. Yeah. Op- opening up says my name right on yep, it. Yep. It says so- Chris right on it. And okay. I think actually you have 10. I think I have eight. Questions to ask Christine. Yes. Is. Okay. I'm looking over right okay, now. Okay. So you can't read ahead. You just have well, to ask them to me one at a time okay so So who goes first you because you have more so you're gonna start and end okay you can ask me the first question okay question number one to christine it says here now i didn't write these christine wrote these so (laughs) So you might have to read them twice (laughs) okay between me and you who would win in an eating contest? Oh, um, I definitely think that you would win in an eating contest because you hate leftovers. You won't That's eat true, them. True. That's so true. <laughs> and you love food so much. Like, you're like, it's so good. I just, oh, there's one more chicken. I just have to eat it. Like the poor little lonely chicken. I know. <laughs> I, and I can't, I can't throw it away. I feel like I can't throw it away and I can't eat leftovers. So I'm like, the only one option left. So I think in an eating contest, you would win unless it was something that i'm like super obsessed with and still you can eat faster than me although from being in education i had to learn how to eat lunch really fast because you're always on the go well there you go yeah Yeah. oh me too for my job and things like that too yeah Yeah. i'm always eating in a hurry you remember every time i have an interview and i do the editing for the interview and i have to go to work what am i doing i'm like stuffing my face (laughs) as fast as i can i have something to eat that to go to work so it's like really quick it makes me think of that movie that we just watched with the kids the other night called yes day where they're having this like competition to eat this ice cream sundae. Oh, and yeah. And then the dad like pulls it out at the end and he was like munching down. And they vomited in the bathroom. <laughs> no, that. no, it was the other end, remember? Oh, I, okay, okay. <laughs> TMI, TMI. Okay, well, thanks for that first question. Okay, Chris. So I'm starting off with a little bit of a deep one here. Oh, okay. Tell us the story of when we first met in person. Okay, this is great. I love this. So... <laughs> So Christine and I met on this little website called Match.com, and if you want twenty five percent off your order, please, con- <laughs> please, 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 please fill in uh, coupon code Chris and Christine. Is- Chris is the best at Chris and Christine show. <laughs> no, not a plug. Go ahead. <laughs> Anyways, we we met on on we met on uh, Match.com, and um, we were there, and then we started talking on the website and on the app player, and then very quickly, I don't know if it was quickly or not, we did switch to the actual texting via phone or iphone i don't remember when we did that but uh we did that we talked back and forth and then i think we had i had i'm trying to remember exactly how so long ago so way in the past i just want to know our first meeting in person where did we meet and what was it like okay 
We met at McGregor's Bar and Grill in San Diego. That is by the old RIP, the old stadium, which is no longer there anymore because they just ripped it down to the ground. Right. But it was the par, par pub restaurant, uh, Irish pub restaurant. It's a very popular right. place. It's like literally walking distance to the stadium where it used to be anyways. And so it's a very popular place for the kiddos. You know, they have pool tables and they've got um, other college type games there. I think they may have have... Uh, What's when you slide the little like um, a video game thing? It's like a video game bowling, maybe with salt on the board. They may salt have, on the board. Yeah, it's like a um, I forget what it's called, but it's like a game. Anyways, they may have one of those there. <laughs> Anyways, He's coming up with the, with funny games. It's you slide a thing and there's salt, and then you take a shot and you you know no. suck a lime. <laughs> no, it's not a drinking game. <laughs> maybe there's what? only salt on there because you dumped somebody's margarita. <laughs> that could be <laughs> it. Wasn't mine. <laughs> So I see Christine. Well, first, I got there early, and then I tell Christine, hey, I'm here. And she's like, I'm not even ready yet. Oh, my goodness. So I wait in my car. Well, I knew she lived close by, so it was okay. If and I let's wait- tell the truth. You told everybody in a couple episodes ago that you tried to find a place close to my house, but I'm not that kind of girl. Well, I was just thinking that maybe if you want to take the party to the, you know, Netflix, no, no, Netflix and chill. No, maybe, uh, no. Family-friendly podcast. I'm, I am keeping it family-friendly. Nice I'm just, Christian church girl here. I, I, thank you. Okay. Thank you. So what I'm saying is, is that uh, maybe if you want to hang out or something, you know, cool. So, but that didn't happen. But what did happen was, is that I met Christine right at the front door. She gets out of her convertible Camaro. And it was, she had a top down, but it's fine. Convertible Camaro. She gets out and she gives us like, hey, how you doing? Oh my gosh, so good to see you. Big smile, big hug. I think I gave her a hug. And I said, hey, want to go inside? Yeah. So we go inside. <laughs> that's, that's the way that you simulate my voice. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go inside. So I go in, we go inside. We found like this little high top table kind of near the front door. So in case Christine needs to bounce out of here, she's too crazy. She could like bounce out in a hurry. You know, I didn't want to find the, the corner creepy table in the very back dark corner. I said, found something right in the middle, right there in front of the bar, right there up front. And it was kind of busy too. I think it was like Friday night or Saturday night. So it was kind of busy. So anyways, we should go back there. I would love to go back. There. Are they even open? I think they are. Yeah, we'll find out. Oh, but when but, we met there, that was so sweet. I went to the bathroom like four times. Did you think I was going to ditch you? Um, no, I did not. I did not. For some reason, I didn't. I didn't get that vibe from you that yeah, you were going to take off. I and, wasn't that kind of girl. I was totally into you. Oh well, you who, were so. Cute. Who isn't? I know. Oh, you were so nervous. It was I'm, so. I always get nervous on first day. Button up shirt and looking all sporty with your glasses and your little silver sports. I car. Do, I look smart. That's what you I, totally look smart. I gotta look smart so my dumbness doesn't come through. That oh, much. you are not. But when I say look smart, like that's actually a term. Like you look smart. Like you look sharp. You looked good. Well, sharp is different than looking smart. I think smart is something that people that aren't so bright like myself do. They wear glasses. Stop I wear talking to bad about yourself. And they'll dress very preppy looking. Well, the, you did dress preppy. Yeah. See, that's a thing. I'm totally into that too. Oh, see, there you go. There you go. <laughs> well, that's awesome, Chris. Well, thanks for telling us the story on where we first met. What do you have next for me? Okay. Question number two on my list here. It says, Christine. Do you and I have a song? And if so, what is it? And I know what it is. What do you know what it is? Okay. Well, so yes, we have a song that we used for our wedding. Yep. But there was another song that we had like a really strong connection to. So our song is Honeybee. And we danced to Head and Heart. Yeah. Head and Heart. and Or Head and Hands? Heart head, and Hand. Head and Heart. Head um, and Head. I think it's Head it's and It's Honeybee. Not the Blake Shelton one, but it's Head and Heart. And we love that one. And um, I love dancing to that one. And anytime it comes on now, I sing it. But what initially I thought was our song is the song Shallow from Star is Born. Because Why? you're like, I don't know. Every time we would listen to that, you would like, you'd put on the vinyl and we'd dance to it in the kitchen. And after we watched that movie, A Star is Born, that was the first night that you fake proposed to me. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I got all emotional, you know, because he proposed to the chick in the movie and I got all like, you know, I love that kind of stuff. I love the music and I love that kind of stuff. So I kind of got uh, swept away with the music, you know, and the movie yeah. and, and all that stuff. And, you know, you know how that goes. Oh, well. And I did love you. I'm not lying about that. Did you? You already knew that? Of course I did, baby. Oh. I know. I maybe, did, I maybe you told me before that. I don't know. Okay. All right. All right. My question for you. Now, this is a funny one, and I don't even know the answer to this. What is your most embarrassing moment that happened while you were with me? Um, Probably the first time I farted in front of you. <laughs> I, I can't remember when that was, but that's probably what it was. You, don't, you wouldn't say it was the stingray? 
Oh, I forgot about the stingray. <laughs> I thought of like maybe the stingray or like something else. Like I, when your ex girlfriend a- texted and I was re- nearby or. But okay, you two. Mm, all right. <laughs> I think it's every guy's or every girl's like, like you know, you get to that lo- noises. Yeah, yeah. When, you, when you get to that level with a relationship <laughs> where where it becomes like free range, where it's like <laughs> it's, you're not hiding it anymore. You're not trying to like like. I mean, I mean, I'll, I'll be right back. I'm, where are you going, honey? I'll be right back. And you run downstairs or outside, and you like let it go, and then you come back in, and you're like. Where'd you go? Uh, you know, I just had to check the mail. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go for a walk. Or, or when you're on a first date with somebody and you open the door for the girl and you walk around the back of the car and you're just letting it rip, <laughs> rip, 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 and then you get to the front of the car <laughs> and then you get in and then you're just like, ah. <sighs> and she's like, what's that smell of onions? <laughs> oh, nothing. Sorry, I was just using some, you know. Breath freshener. Yeah, somebody over there. Oh my gosh. Somebody over there. I mean, yeah, that's, or was that a skunk? <laughs> that's probably, I think, I think for most guys, that's probably an embarrassing moment. I Is would it? Say. When the first time that happens. But once it does happen, it's like free range. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, that was a great one. Okay. What's your next question? Okay. Number three I have here. What would, okay. What would my ideal date be? My ideal date. Oh, your ideal date. Um, no, we're not talking about a person. We're talking about I'm okay, your ideal see, date, but five, your, ide- <laughs> your ideal date. I think that it would have to do with um, you love it when we go for a drive, like in the Z, and I don't freak out because you're going fast around corners, and maybe something with a GoPro. Um, you like things where we're doing stuff and like sitting on the beach and quiet or like at a quiet restaurant with wine at sunset. That's like my ideal. Yours is more like action oriented so i could see us like going for a ride in the z and then like going and parking at some place like and watching the sunset and taking some really cool pictures of the z at sunset and then maybe like stopping at one of the casinos for a great dinner and like a little bit of gambling and something fun like that that's what i would say is your ideal date is yeah. what, what do you think it would be? I like I like doing that kind of stuff too. I, I would say going somewhere. It doesn't have to be like I don't know. It doesn't have to be like this big trip to New York or anything crazy like that. I mean, trip type stuff. It can be like a. It can be a fun evening out. Like the casinos. The casino seems like a hit. When we we have been to casino forever, but I know when you can go to the casino back in the golden days of casinos when it was all free and open, is that. We would go have dinner and then we could have, play a little bit of roulette if they're open with that and we have some fun. Maybe we'll win, maybe we won't. Who knows? Right. But it's all encompassing a good time. Maybe even take the Z, you know, and and have that have it all one one time, right? One shot, or or even better, maybe do something like they said, driving down, like we did a few weeks ago. We took this car out, we went down to Sunset Cliffs, we drove right. around, we went to our very same spot we got married at. Yeah, we went drove. See, that was so fun. That day was so go- cool, and we drove the Z around, and we went to not only the spot we got married, but then we went to. Um, well, we went to lots of different places. We had like drinks and appetizers at one place. We had lunch at a different place. We went to our wedding spot and it was fun to like go around to a couple of different locations. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. So whose turn is it? Mine or yours? Um, it's mine. Okay. okay. So now this one, it's, it's a brief answer. Describe what you first thought of me in one word. Well. One word. Have uh, you ever said one word? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. Let me think. What, we talked when I first met you. Or when met you, you first saw me, like physically in person. Yes, one word. Happy. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, it could just be me. My charm could have rubbed off on you, and maybe you were happy. But uh, you looked very. When I first met you, you were like the first thing I saw. You got out of the car, and you were like smiling and like like oh hi, you know like. That very happy, charming feeling. And how did that make you feel when you saw me? Very so well, very welcoming. Yeah, you know? and that's the thing too is that you were very welcoming to me. Like, I like you welcomed me into like to be hang out with you. You know, mm-hmm. like it wasn't like oh gosh, okay, let's get this date over with. You know, it wasn't like that feeling of like I got better things to do. And yeah, and I also noticed too. I don't remember this or not, but I don't believe that either one of us were buried into our phones during the date. I don't nothing think- at all. We didn't even look at our phone. You checked it at one point when you asked, like, you said, oh, what time is it? And I looked at my phone first and I told you and you were like, oh, shoot, my mom's watching the kids. I need to check in. And then uh, she had a text and you texted her back. And then 
we were like, we'll just be here for a few more minutes. And then it was like another hour later. Oh, I know. She had to get up for church in the morning. But shout out to Sandy. She listens every week. So thanks, Sandy, for uh, making that first date possible. Without you watching the kiddos, we wouldn't be. I would have honestly... If you had flaked for one more week on wanting to get together, I probably would have been like, this guy's just not serious about dating because you kind of strung me along for two weeks. I know. That's what I do. I, you know, it's my, it's my go-to, you know? Yeah. And you know what? So our um, six-month wedding anniversary is on May 20th. What? And our dating anniversary from our first date, three years from our first date, is June 9th. Wow, it's around the corner. I know. Well, Can check you believe that, that? I know. You know, I you know, funny thing is, babe, I don't see any other thing other than you. I don't see any other uh, dates, any any other women. I don't well, see, I hope not you're married. <laughs> well, I don't I don't see any of that stuff. All I all I remember is always being with you. Oh. Yeah. I was just gonna say that from our first date, we've been inseparable. Did you notice that? Uh there may be a couple times you you went on vacation. But I mean like We've never broken up, knock on wood. <laughs> we've never broken up. I mean, we we bicker here and there, but like since that first date, um, we just clicked. Yeah, you're it like was, a, you're my BFF. Oh, from the very first date. Second date. <laughs> you're the, so fir- cute. the first date's like the interview. You gotta be oh. hired first. You know, is it, my, is it my question or your question? It's your question. You're on number four now. Okay, number four. Here we go. Now I did not read these prior, so let's see what this say here. It says here. Which one of us is a better driver? <laughs> well, could it be A, the person that does it for a living? Uh, okay. Or B. So I have two answers. The first answer is you are the better driver technically. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you are the worst passenger on the face Wait, of the planet. I don't see passenger on no, this question. But that is part of it because anytime I'm driving... You remind me of my mom when I was learning how to drive where she'd be like, tight, 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 like telling me to turn tight. And I'm like, just like going with the flow, because if I cut something too close, you're like freak out. And then it freaks me out. And like one time I hit the gas instead of the brake. Oh, and I oh, oh, my, oh, my goodness. <laughs> and then it goes into your your belief that I'm a horrible driver. So really, uh, you are the best and the worst in the relationship. Oh, well, thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, so next question I get to ask you. It may be one that you've never actually thought about, but maybe you spend all of your nights thinking about this. Okay, what you got, baby? But what celebrity couple are we most like? I don't really follow a lot of celebrity couples. I honestly couldn't really tell you one that's still together to this day. (laughs) So I would say one. They broke up years ago. Oh, really? I don't know. (laughs) Okay. I don't know. I just did just hear the other day. That uh, Ben Affleck and J Lo are getting back, got back together. Oh no, that is so fake news. No, I saw it for real on on the feed or whatever. On what feed? On Fox News? No. On Inside? No, on no. National Enquirer? <laughs> no, I don't know. It was on Instagram. Well, we don't want to be like them on again, off again. We want to be like. I don't know. Honestly, in it honestly, to win it. honestly, I don't know. I don't follow. You know, I think of some couples. Like, oh, they're such a cute couple, and then next week they're breaking up. Yeah. So I, you know, I don't want to base our relationship. On a fake celebrity, like flash in the pan relationship where it's like they're hot and they're done. You know, one that I think of is um, I think it's Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively. Um, I think that's who his wife is. But they're such like they're very grounded. And again, you know, you could find them breaking up in the future. Hopefully not. But next week. But he seems to be very grounded in his priorities to his family. And so does she. And like very centered, though, even though she's like super famous as a celebrity like very much aware of her role in the relationship and like keeping them as best friends. And um, I don't say that we have to model after that, but I would want to, st- if we were to be like a celebrity couple, to be like somebody that's going strong and steady. Okay. All right. I got you. Yeah. All right. Well, you get number five. Okay. Next question, baby. It says here, who said I love you first? Oh, I love this story. So wait, no, I well, answer the question. I am going to answer it. Okay, you said it. Of, of course, I did. You did. Did I really? You did. Okay, how did I say it? Okay, so here's the story. We, um, it was a, a really difficult day. Your mom had suddenly gotten really sick, um, out of the blue, and she had to go to the hospital that day. And we had taken her out for her birthday at lunch and she ended up getting sick and the ambulance had to come to the restaurant and get her and I remember you were so shaken up and I was supposed to go back to work and I um, just had to not make my meeting 
and took you back to my apartment because the the hospital that your mom was going to is right by my apartment. And I remember you were so stressed and I finally like got you to calm down. And then we went to the hospital to check on her and you were like shaking. You were so nervous to see her because she just was really sick at that time. And uh, she was trying to reassure you and so was I. Um, and then, you know, I went into the room and was like checking on her chart and everything to take care of her and, you know, making her feel good. And I remember she said, um, she's like, gosh, Chris, you've got to marry her because, you know, I need somebody to look after me in my old age. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I cracked up because we weren't, we hadn't been dating for a really long time because um, remind me of your mom's birthday month. In November. Yes. Yeah, so June, July, August, September, October, November. I'm sorry, Sandy. I didn't mean to forget that. But like maybe five or six months we'd been together. And at that point, we had only been boyfriend and girlfriend officially for like a week, two months. Oh, a month? Two months. Oh, was it? Because okay. we had had that define the relationship talk. And that was when you were like, oh, I don't really like to put a title on things. That's true. <laughs> but I knew. I that's knew. Me, that's me like, like not, it's, it's like me at the pool, like dipping my toes in. Like, I don't want to go in. Well, I don't know. I think it was like you didn't want to. Here you are just pushing me. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I didn't. Uh, I think you didn't want to jinx it because you talked about us being a good thing. And I could tell that you were a little bit gun shy of. Like calling it anything for the fear of losing it. I could tell that about you. Oh, thanks, babe. And so we were at the hospital and then we left and we realized like we really hadn't eaten anything since that lunch. And it was like almost midnight and we came down from the hospital and you were like starving. And so was I. And I was like, well, do we want Wendy's or whatever? And then I saw the Denny sign uh, right there on Mission Gorge Road. And so we went to the Denny's on Mission Gorge Road and we were sitting there and just talking about um, different things and you were thanking me for being there for you for the day and then just like out of the blue you were holding my hands you were looking at me we had decaf coffee sitting right next to us and you just told me that you loved me and I tried not to overreact because I didn't want to scare you away and I didn't want you to backpedal and be like oh just joking (laughs) oh yeah uh, so anyways uh (laughs) How's and, your food? Is it good too? Yeah, and be like, um, what, what? You like I, the syrup? I meant, I meant I love the food here. Uh, is- yeah, I love the pancakes. But I remember, and you kind of teared up when you said it to me, and I knew that it was very heartfelt. And I will forever remember that memory, um, because what it showed me is like being there for you is one of the most important things. Like people can show up for people in different ways and you just need somebody that's constant and that's stable and that's just going to be by your side. And, um, I'm, I waited, I was refusing to say, I love you first and I loved you. I knew I loved you, but I wasn't going to say that because I didn't want to take that away from you. I wanted you to tell me first. Well, you got your wish, baby. Well, thank you very much. So what is your question for me? All right. Oh, I like this one. Okay. So continuing on with our newlywed game, what is the best gift I have ever given to you? Wow. Okay. So, Christine, if you may not know, she gives spectacular gifts. She has given me, I would say, in my history of my entire life, every gift that she's given me has been so spectacular. I would put them as the best gifts of all time, ever. Okay. That's a cop out for not remembering anything. <laughs> what, is the, what is the best gift I've ever given you? <laughs> I caught you. See, I know you so well. This is part of the newlywed game. Chris, you've got to pick one. Okay, okay. I'm putting you on the spot. Oh my goodness. Okay. I okay. I did like I did like the race car driving for my birthday. We did up in uh, oh, Las, yeah. Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. I love driving the GTR in that whole event. That whole package was spectacular. I was just thinking about that today because Mason was wearing the shirt we bought for oh, him. Oh yeah. The gift sh- the gift shop shirt. He still wears. He loves that shirt. He wears it all the time. Okay, but you have to tell everybody what we actually did because so, you're just kind of giving them pieces. Okay, so what we and did- it was our first. The first time we went to Vegas. Yeah. yeah right? So it was we'd only been mar- uh, married. We'd only been dating for like five or six months at the time. It right. was like the month before your mom's birthday. Right. You it hadn't was- even told me you love me yet. Oh, OK. Well, we went to Las Vegas because you're planning to go to Las Vegas. And I got us a room. I don't know where we say that, but we stayed in Las Vegas. We Ve- stayed at the Paris. Was the Paris? OK. Yes. We stayed at the Paris. And, you know, we both started, like, gambling, like, both, like, playing roulette. We both play that kind of stuff. So it was a fun trip to go out there. And for my birthday surprise on the way up, Christine did, is that, because I love car- cars and I love sports cars and things like that. There are two companies in, Va- in Las Vegas 
they let you rent. Oh, sorry, they let you take a race car. I'm sorry, a sports car. A, a high dollar sports car onto the racetrack onto their pre-made racetrack there's one as you come into town and there's one other other side closer to the nascar track right which is the one we went to it's called uh what was it called race something i don't know we'll talk about it later okay anyways so of the cars to choose from you have like your ferraris your lamborghinis your porsches your corvettes and you also have the nissan gtr now i have currently owned a nissan 370z sports car right. so, so i'm like well let's pick the gtr the gtr to my my eyes was like a, they call it the godzilla of sports cars <laughs> well back in the day and uh, i've always they let you pick anything from the package i gave you right no they did not oh, okay. the higher the higher the value of the car the higher the price tag was okay because uh, well, it wasn't cheap but you, i know but it, you still had your choice of some really cool cars right right so we ch- i went with the uh, gtr which was also seemed pretty popular car that day because because on our little uh tour bus that, that took us from the casino to the racetrack the guys in the tour bus with us were also choosing to drive the gtr so i'm like really one gtr we all gotta share it so it's kind of like you'll take turns but that was a very fun experience and then we did the drifting oh my goodness they, and i went in there with you as a passenger yeah you're not a driver during the drift experience you're just a passenger they have a physically a a stunt driver behind the wheel of a Dodge Charger with a supercharger in it, the very high horsepower one. It's like a four door sedan, but it's a V8 high power supercharged. And he took that thing and he ripped it around the track going <laughs> so fast. He was drifting around the corner so much, and we were, just, it felt like we we're just gliding around the corner. You see smoke flying behind you. They got, we got video of it, of us doing yeah, it. Yeah, we do. Oh, it's so much fun. That, that was. A spectacular gift, and I think that was amazing. And that's what I've learned about you is I can give you physical gifts, and you really do like them, but you love experiences, too. And so I try to do that for you as much as I can. Oh, that is amazing. Well, thanks, baby. So what you got next for me, Chris? Okay, so next question for Christine. What number are we on again? Uh... You should be on six. Okay, number six. Okay, here we go. When did you know I was, quotation marks, the one? Ooh, that's a good question. Um... So I don't know if it was like one specific moment. I think it was like this gradual knowledge. Like I knew I loved you, but I would say that coming out of a previous toxic-ish relationship and going through the trauma I endured in my past marriage, I I used to be that girl that was like, oh, am, am I going to know this person is the one? And it's like you're waiting for this one light bulb moment. And I think that it was gradually letting my guard down and letting you more and more into my life and realizing how much I felt that I was myself. And I knew I loved you and I knew I wanted to be with you. And I think part of what helped me realize how different things were with you is my friends telling me how happy they saw me and how they saw me being so happy. Sorry, <clears throat> not going to cry. How happy they saw me being myself. Like being yeah. very authentic that they didn't feel like I was trying to show up as something else. Because my friends had seen me through dating some other individuals and how I would like try to accommodate and, you know, having some like codependent kind of tendencies and how they saw that I was being healthy and establishing boundaries. But um, that you were respecting that and how much fun we had together. And um, I don't know. I I knew early on that I wanted to spend my life with you. And then I got so frustrated that it was taking you forever to get there, too. I was like, you know, we were getting more serious. And I was like, oh, my gosh, are we ever going to get married? And I think that it's because you and I viewed marriage a little bit different. Like you were fine with us living together for a while. Right. Which we weren't living together because um, I was like, I'm not gonna live with you if there's not a ring on my finger oh that's right i forgot yeah. I, I got you i got you. we got engaged yeah. and then christy moved in yeah a little bit after that but um i think that oh i don't know i think that it was like some moments when we were with the boys there was a time and it was early on where i really thought that this was different and it was when we took the boys to universal studios we'd only been dating for like a month and a half And I saw you with Ezekiel and Jacob and Mason and how you were a goofball, but so good with them. And I was like, gosh, this is this is what I've been missing in my whole life is like 
just somebody that brings so much happiness and and fun and helps me to not take myself so seriously. And um, yeah, just, you know, little moments like that. The Vegas trip was another one for me. And that was the, without kids. So you got to see the side of you with kids and the side of you without kids. I think it's very important because when you're dating somebody who has kids, you usually only see one side of that. You'll see the kid only side or you'll see the, the without kids. And then you bring the kids in. They're like, who are these little rugrats? Yeah. You know, I never saw these kids before. You know what I mean? So it's a shocker. So this way you kind of get a blending of both. Right. And it's so funny because our first date was just you and me. But then you invited me over to have dinner here at the house. And I met the boys that Monday. So we had our first date on Saturday. And then two days later, I actually met the boys, which, you know, one of my friends was like, you shouldn't go meet the boys so soon. Like that's why are you meeting kids so quickly? And I think that it was the right decision for us because we dated with kids the whole time. And it was like our time alone was less than our time with kids. Was it? I don't yes. know. Yes. Yeah. We had kids more often than not. So, yeah. Right. But that's kind of been the story of my life since I've had yeah. kids for the most part. Like, I I don't know. And that's, that's the one thing, too, is people who are single parents out there, they always struggle with the, I got the kids. Are they going to be scared of the kids? Right. How am I going to arrange? Is mom going to be available to babysit so I can go out with so-and-so? And then you can't really go back to your place or whatever, or they're always going back to the other person's place because they got the kids or they got the free night. It's the kids become kind of the burden. And I don't think our kids should be a burden. Right. They shouldn't. It should be like, we're a package deal because I know that that was a thing with Ezekiel was I needed somebody to love him as fiercely as I love him because, you know, I gave up everything to give us a better life. And so... Um, yeah, so I don't think there's an easy answer to that question. I think it was like a culmination of experiences, but it really, I think if I was to say like there was this one thing that made you, me recognize that you were the one, it would be easier to like dissect that versus I like the fact that there's all of these different experiences that kind of like braided together to solidify our bond. There you go. That Wasn't was that well. a nice visual? It's very well Ooh, said. I love it. I know. That was kind of hot. Oh, it was. So what, what kind of questions you got from me, baby? Okay, so... If I was a Disney character, who would I be? How about I say Belle from Beauty and the Beast? Oh, because she's so smart, reading her books all the time, like Christine is. They're so <laughs> smart with her doctor and all that stuff. And, I, and I'd be like the Beast. I'm more like the Beast. I get mad and I start throwing things like the Beast did. <laughs> and then I get like, I'm going to my room, aka podcast studio, and I was gonna <laughs> lock the door and don't touch my flowers. <laughs> That was so funny. Okay. Uh, what question do you have for me next? Okay. What are we on? Number uh, seven. Seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. What, what we already answered this one. What says, was it? Where, it says, where do we go on our first date? Oh, okay. Sorry. That was McGregor. So, McGregor. Okay. okay. Go, can I go to the next yes. question? Okay. The next question says, who is my celebrity crush? Who is your celebrity crush? Yeah. As in my celebrity crush. Um, okay. So I don't know if anybody else would classify them as celebrities, but I would say most of the female news anchors on San Diego news station. What? Hey, yes. shout out. What's up? <laughs> hey, What's we're, the we're, girl's name that you really there, like? There were so many of them. I know. You love the news. He's like, oh, oh, hold on. It's my favorite girl. We're watching the news. Oh. And you're like, isn't she so good? And I'm like... <laughs> Um, she's telling you the weather, Chris, but it's just the way she does it, Christine. I'm like, oh gosh. So shout out to all of the ladies in San Diego's news uh, station. Uh, that... Fox 5, Heather, what's up? How you yeah. doing? Uh, Kathleen Bay. <laughs> oh my gosh, see? I knew it. <laughs> Dude, I've been a fan of Kathleen's for like forever, though. Like, what if we were to get she, her on the show? She was supposed to go on the show. We, oh. She said she was going to, but I don't happen with that. So well, I, I, have to, I have to hit her up. That's your celebrity crush. I think like you like to like different actresses and stuff like that you like. But if we were to really break it down, it would be our local news girls. You, if you would be like drooling over them, you're like, oh. hey, um, sign my arm <laughs> <laughs> whatever my forehead <laughs> i'm not into like sign stuff i'm like hey, take, let's do a selfie that's what, yeah <laughs> that's what i do that's so funny okay mike my, my turn to ask you all right what question. you got what you got babe um if i had a superpower what would you want it to be what would i want it to be or what would you want it to be if i had a superpower what would you want my superpower to be listening to my stupid conversation <laughs> 
endless oh um you would uh, like uh endless amount of patience is what that would say <laughs> Pretty, yes exactly mm-hmm. patience for- patience superhero <laughs> or actually getting me like understanding why i'm so mad and what i'm what i'm like what's frustrating me and like <laughs> And like how a oh, mind reader, basically, yeah, basically, yeah, <laughs> or a feelings um, communicator. Oh, an empath, yeah. There you go. Yeah, oh, an intuitive empath. Ooh, very nice. Okay, next question of the newlywed game. Okay, here we go. Uh, oh, what is my best feature? Ah, your humor. I mean, you're very hot. You're That's very what you say that someone's ugly. No, you're very hot. You're very <laughs> handsome. I'm very attracted to you. Oh, thanks, baby. But your humor is so you're so quick-witted i can't even explain it and it's like you come up with things like so fast it's like (laughs) i'm still processing what somebody said and you already have three comebacks to it oh it's seriously like if you were my best friend in middle school maybe i wouldn't have been bullied as much because you would have been like coming right back at those boys that were picking on me because you're so sharp with your wit sometimes i am i think sometimes things just come to me just they just hit me and i just think of it you know it's sometimes you think of things and you have to build up on a on a comeback you're like what what am i gonna say me think of things and and then sometimes something just kind of hits you and that's what that's kind of what I do is a lot of things will come to me real quick and I'll just spit them out. Sometimes it doesn't always work out the way you want it to because it sounds like uh, diarrhea of the mouth, as, <laughs> as I've been told many times. But uh, well, thanks, baby. Yeah. OK. My last question for you on my list is who is more emotional between the two of us? I would say you. No, Be- liar. Because I'll tell you why. There's been many a times where your emotions have taken the best of you. And they have taken it to the next level. And what I mean by next level is <laughs> I... Air our dirty laundry right now. What I mean by next level is I mean, you know, there's one thing to get mad. <laughs> there's one thing to get to, to uh, you know... Um, You're putting me on blast. <laughs> there's one thing to uh, speak out your emotions and say, I'm mad because of this, this, and this. And then there's another level. Then the third level, I would say, is physically doing something about your emotions. What? Like, You're acting like I beat you or something. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I have never laid hands on you. I'm just except for one time throwing your lean cuisine in. <laughs> you did? <laughs> we were dating at the time. You oh, well, so mad. I threw your lean cuisine. See, okay. <laughs> see, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that is what I'm talking about. No. So so on that on that note, it would be you. Oh, I have to th- no. This is this is I I completely disagree. Oh, why because, why is that, honey? Um uh, Sandy, are you listening? Could you phone in right now? Um if we were doing this live, your mom and I would outvote you because if you stub a toe, <laughs> <laughs> the whole house wakes up. Oh, or my covid shot I oh just got. Oh my gosh. And then you got sick the next day. You got sick the next day from your covid vaccine and I was getting my hair done at the hairdresser and I had you on speakerphone, so my hairdresser can vouch for this if Joanna's listening. Okay. You call and you were like, I'm dying. I think I need to call an ambulance. I need to call 911. <laughs> and I was like, what's wrong? I don't know. I'm dying. I'm really dying. <laughs> you are. So you are one of when I when it says like who is more emotional on a on the regular, on the daily, you are the most <laughs> expressive person I've ever met in my entire <laughs> life. Like literally, I'm like. Oh, hey babe do you want to do a podcast do you want to do a podcast i want to do a podcast hey clover 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 hey clover clover <laughs> oh and then you'd be like stub your toe bleep, bleep, bleep. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. maybe we are both very in touch with our emotions <laughs> that, that is true i just more vocal sometimes yes you know? okay what's the next is this the last one you have yeah for me? this okay. is the last question i have for you and it says um uh, which one of us is more honest? Okay, so I have to say, I have never lied to you, and I'm a very honest person, but I would say if we were to say who's the most honest, it would be you because you cannot lie. You cannot <laughs> lie. That's my superpower. And, yeah, it's seriously, it's like if you try to tell me a lie, you give it away by laughing um, when people want to surprise me for my birthday you can't keep it from me it's you're true. like i can't surprise you i i would not want to be surprised like this i have to tell you that's true and you're honest with me about everything including like past relationship stuff that maybe i didn't always need to know 
But that's the thing is we walked into this eyes wide open with me knowing like there is absolutely no secrets in our relationship. And you've shown me like you've told me the good, the bad, the ugly, the uglier. And I'm good with it all. And I feel like that's so refreshing. Um, And what we've had to work on is sometimes the delivery of the honesty. Sometimes it comes across a little bit rough. Um, But I, I do have to say like, I never have to question when I put on an outfit and I try it on for you. And if you tell me I look really good, then I know I look really good. Well, there you go, baby. <laughs> I'm being very honest. I'm an, yeah. honest, I'm an honest guy. Yeah. You know? Like, honest Abe. I should be like uh, President Link. Uh, maybe, maybe. But I like honest Chris instead. Wow. So, honey, thank you for trusting me with this episode how did you feel about our newlywed game oh i loved it so much you know we should probably find some more games like this yeah. that we could probably play you know uh, mix it up and things of that sort or whatever i don't know i mean you pretty much covered a lot of things in this episode today yeah but uh you know it's, uh, i love it i have to say it's great you, and you, you know a job. for our listeners if you know anything about us you know that not only do we love to share a good show with you but we love to keep these episodes as memories for ourselves to kind of see the progress in our relationship. And so thanks for being along on our relationship journey with us. And especially for those of you that have been listening since we first started the Chris and Christine show and then announced our engagement and then our wedding. And now our six month anniversary is coming up. We appreciate your support. We appreciate your dedication. Um, And if you got some joy out of this and hearing our laughter and our fun, we would love it if you give us a review on Apple Podcasts and doesn't have to be five star, although we love those five star reviews. Um, and then definitely subscribe and share this episode with somebody that you love that could use a little bit of laughter and a little bit of love in their life. Thank you. And thank you once again for listening. We really, really appreciate that because we, we need everybody. We need all the listeners we can get. Yeah, actually. absolutely. And if you're looking for more of this fun and sunshine, you can find us at our website, which is www.chrisandchristineshow.com And that is Chris and Christine with K's. And we will see you next week. Remember this week that life is too short to wake up in the morning with regret. So love the people who treat you right. Forget about the ones who don't and believe that everything happens for a reason. If you get a chance, take it. If it changes your life, let it. Nobody said that it would be easy. They just promised it would be worth it. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Chris. And I'm Christine. And until next week, keep moving forward. <laughs>